All right. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks, Yulin, for a very interesting session. Uh, I think I myself learned a lot. Uh, so for myself, I am uh, Rampreet. Uh, I am uh, actually a Java developer. And, uh, but I have interest in knowing the software development lifecycle processes. So that's why I did my certification in Scrum and in PMP to basically broaden my, my knowledge in these areas. So what I'm going to present today is Scrum ceremonies, right? All right, so before I start, I'll just um, uh, explain some key terms uh, for the benefit of those who are not involved in Agile project or uh, basically want to refresh themselves on, right? Uh, so first of all, sprint, right? So in the normal um, waterfall, um, you know, methodology, we have something called releases, right? Which we do after like three months or six months, depending upon uh, whatever suits us. So in in uh, Scrum, we call it a sprint. The difference between the waterfall and uh, and uh, Scrum is that we make basically um, smaller releases because we want to deliver the customer value often and uh, fast, right? So typically uh, a sprint is of two to four weeks long. I have seen some sprints one week long also, that's fine, but as long as you know we adhere to some standards, some practices, it's, it's okay. Uh, next term is Scrum team. So what's there in Scrum team? Um, as earlier, uh, Yulin shared that uh, everyone in the Scrum team is basically a member. There isn't any such thing like someone is architect or a manager. Basically, it's a cross-functional team, right? So we have dev team that actively does the development. And we have a product owner who takes the ownership of the product, right? So in the traditional waters, uh, waterfall life cycle, it is basically a BA. And then we have Scrum master who is not really a project manager, is a facilitator, brings the team together, and he's basically, he or she is a process coach. And uh, yeah, so Scrum Master is basically a process coach, is a protector uh, in the sense that um, he or she will protect the team from external negative influences, politics, and all that stuff. And um, so it's a servant leader. Uh, what do we mean by servant leader? So it is a leader whose aim is not just to you know, get the status update. It, the aim is to serve the team uh, to make sure that the end goal of the sprint is achieved, right? And uh, then we have user story. So user story is something very similar to uh, our requirement. So traditionally, we used to write our use cases, and we used to write alternative flows and the, the happy case scenario, all that stuff. Now, use, the, the difference is that user story has a specific format. And I find it that this format is very beautiful. So why, why is it so? So for example, I can say, as a customer, um, I want to uh, cancel the ticket so that I can make alternate plans. So what's, a, what's the good thing about this format is that it forces me as a product owner to think, why am I building something, right? Sometimes you would notice that developers would add cool features, right, which basically are not even needed. So it makes the product owner to think about what we are delivering, why we are delivering, and it makes the developer to think about uh, what needs to be tested. And the next term is epic. Epic is a big user story. So user stories are typically like one-liners, but epic is something that is at a very, very high level, uh, which hasn't been thought through. It hasn't gone through refinements at a very high level. OK, then product owner is, um, has some main responsibilities, like he has to maximize the business value of the product. So a product owner owns the goals and vision of the product. And he is the person who has to decide between um, schedule, cost, quality, so the trade-offs. And the next key term is done. <clears throat> so what do we mean by done is, how, when, how do we consider that our sprint is successful? So there is a term called done. Done means, uh, so what's the definition? The definition is given by the Scrum team itself. So do you consider that when there is no bug in your product, then you are done? Or probably you are OK with, um, you know, as long as the quality is acceptable, but you have some minor issues, is that done? It's up to the Scrum team to define what is considered done. OK, so um, 
I, I like this slide a lot because if I have to explain to someone uh, what is Scrum, I think this slide saves a lot, right? So uh, if you see in this circle, this is what uh, typically happens in a sprint. So we start with planning and produce and then inspect and adapt. So on the far left side, what you see is a product backlog, uh, which is a prioritized list of items or PBIs uh, that need to be delivered. So this is usually prepared by product owner, but uh, it's not necessary that he or she has to prepare it. Sometimes developers can help also, but it is owned by the product owner. So if product owner is not comfortable that a particular item shouldn't be there, then he or she has the authority to say, no, we can't add it. So what happens is at the beginning of the sprint, uh, the first day of the sprint, we do sprint planning meeting, whereby we pick up the items from this backlog. Uh, we slice them to very small sizes, uh, typically like half day's work or something like that. And uh, we put them on some kind of board, right? And then we decide that you know this is the list of items that we are going to deliver uh, in this particular sprint. And the next thing is produce when we do the actual development. So in a sprint, 70 to 80% of the time is spent in the produce where we are actually developing the product. And uh, the next is, um, if you see after produces product backlog refinement. So this is something that regularly happens in each sprint. So we think ahead about what are we going to cover in the next sprint, right? And so then we have done increment, which is basically coded, tested, uh, no defects. And then next cycle is, uh, next step is uh, inspect and adapt, whereby we do sprint review and retrospective. So this cycle goes on. So a typical release or a typical you know, final delivery may have seven, eight, or whatsoever number of sprints. All right, so this is the, the overall picture. We'll go through the detail of each. All right, so starting with the product um, backlog refinement. So what happens is before the first sprint, the product owner, development team, and Scrum Master, they together do product backlog refinement. As I said earlier, it is basically slicing of the bigger items into smaller items, right? So those bigger items sometimes can be bigger user stories, or as I mentioned earlier, epics. So epic could be uh, like, I want a particular feature to be available on mobile. So it's such a... I mean, it, it's a big release in itself, right? But it can be stated by the BA in a single line. Then it allows uh, the development team to get a more detailed understanding of the requirements of the product backlog item. As they slice through, they get to understand what exactly it entails. And uh, the general recommendation is that we should split the item small enough that one to two people can make the item completely done in three to four days. Uh, this is a general guideline, but um, if you have some scenarios where you think you know this rule may not work, then it's fine as long as you can justify to yourself, right? So after the uh, product backlog refinement, uh, at the beginning of the sprint, what we do is a sprint planning. So what the team does is they will pick up the item from the top. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a product backlog is a prioritized list of items. So the product owner has already um, ordered the items in a way which are going to deliver maximum value. So in case we are not able to uh, you know, deliver the bottom items, at least we can, be, we can be happy that we are delivering the items with the most value. So that's very important. So what we do is, uh, when we prepare the sprint uh, backlog is, we further divide the items into smaller chunk, chunks. For example, if I have to code a particular screen, right, then the smaller items can be that I have to prepare a database script, or I have to write my unit test, or um, I have to you know, do some Unix coding for that. So basically, we need to uh, be as fine-grained as possible. And the advantage of that is we'll be able to do a very proper estimation because of that. So um, the recommendation for this is two hours for each week of sprint. So if you have two weeks um, you know, long sprint, then you typically spend four hours going through and slicing these items. OK, so once um, 
we have decided on the items we have broken down the items and the team has picked up as uh, earlier it was shared that team is self organizing they pick up whatever items they are comfortable with and the next thing is daily scrum so it is something that happens every day uh, it is time boxed it's just a 15 minutes meeting where um, we'll have a demo of this at the end of it we'll all will participate in it to get a feel of it um so the idea is that um, it gives us everyday reflection rather than doing at the end of the sprint to see what exactly are we doing are we you know on track or there are some impediments that uh, maybe scrum master has to help us resolve so uh, it's a daily opportunity to inspect and adapt everyone stands in a circle and answers three questions so what have i done since the last scrum meeting what am i going to do uh, until the next um, sprint um, daily scrum and what are the impediments um, i can see if there are some questions that the team members might have with each other and uh, then it is better that there is an offline meeting for that so the purpose of this is to stick to 15 minutes because that's very important if you you know go from 15 to 20 minutes then it can go from 20 to 30 minutes also so it's very important that we um stick to uh, the time box to approach Okay so what happens is scrum master writes down the impediments uh, it's generally avoided that outsiders don't come because we are talking about day to day issues but it's okay um, in one of my projects uh, when we had uh, just started using scrum my manager he brought another director because he just wanted to show uh, that we have you know we are introducing scrum so that's fine but in general it is a it's more of a like development team activity and time box 15 minutes per day okay so once um, you know we are working on our sprint we are having daily scrum we are resolving the issues proactively uh, then when we are near the end of the sprint we have something called a sprint review so what happens is um, in the sprint review uh, it's an inspect and adapt of the product so what we are delivering that thing is going to be reviewed by the product owner uh, development team scrum master as well as stakeholders it's very important to involve the stakeholders not just the uh, product owner because the end users are the ones who are going to use product and if we are missing something if there are any gaps and they are highlighted even at this stage um, it is better than being highlight highlighted in uat when the actual users test the product right so in terms of recommendation on um, how long um, it should be for it's one hour um, depending upon the number of weeks we have in sprint a little bit of variation is fine and the next uh, inspect and adapt um, process is pr sprint retrospective so the earlier one was basically to check the what we have delivered in the it projects it's like showing the user actual demo and getting their feedback uh, is this what was expecting or not and but this one is more from a process perspective how well we have um, implemented our agile process so generally it's recommended that in the print retrospective um it becomes a meeting of development team and scrum master but it is better to avoid the external stakeholders because it, we are reflecting on how how we are doing this right so the current state of the process what's going well for us uh, and what are we having problems with what do we want to try to do differently in the next sprint basically lessons that we can learn from uh, the sprint so there can be multiple formats in which we can do uh, one is you know you can have start stop and continue kind of uh, columns whereby you mention what are the activities we should start doing uh, to improve our process or what we should stop or things that are working well we just continue doing that right so we get the team's feedback on how do we improve um, there are many other formats for example glad sad and mad where people anonymously they give their feedback they take the post it notes and stick it um on the board and the rest of the team just put some dots um on on the comments which comments they agree on so 
top three comments we can pick up from there and then we can see whether we can uh, you know use these comments to improve ourselves further so any kind of format uh, can be there the key thing is continuous improvement should be the base of it we have to um, learn from what we have done whether we should continue same way or we need to improvise that's the main theme oops i'm done yeah so uh, that's all I have. Any questions? Um, what are some key challenges in doing this this entire method yeah. for the first time? So when you're introducing it to a team that has been a conventional method, yeah. so what are your challenges in getting them used to the process? Sure. Uh, the main challenge I have noticed is change. It's a big change and people don't like change, right? They are set in their ways. Uh, so, uh, as Yulin earlier suggested that, send them for training. Now, people, sometimes companies don't have budget. So, what you can do is, if someone knows it, you arrange the internal trainings. Once they understand the concepts, right, that it's not something that's going to shake them out of their comfort zone, but it is going to help them. There are many good principles behind Agile TDD. So initially I used to think that do we need to test every single thing? It's waste of time. But once I started doing it, I realized that as a developer, it has made my life far easier. So when you get people involved, right, initially with some encouragement, uh, I think slowly they can get used to it. Apart from that, uh, as someone I think earlier asked this question, cultural change is very important. Sometimes the change is coming from the you know bottom, but but the whole organization should be involved and um, even some, t some companies they send their managers for trainings. Um, there is a training for the product owner itself. So once they get involved, they understand it's going to help them, um, then you can get buy-in from them. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, then maybe we can do the uh, daily scrum uh, simulation. Yeah. Thank you.